Hello. If my screen is screen is visible or not, please anyone. Okay. Thank you, Miss Ayushi. Okay. So let's uh, st start with the topic. Let's uh, begin our session. But before uh, we start our se session, uh, let me tell you one thing that um, today's session is uh, uh, an introductory overview. So what we will be covering uh, today in this topic uh, will be for the demo uh, and we will show you how you can do it. And as sir mentioned, all the, all those details, you will be able to learn all those topics in details in the upcoming course. So let us start uh, uh, with the today's session. Uh, the first uh, module or say the first topic that we are about to discuss is uh, introduction. Uh, as here you can see fundamentals of remote sensing and GIS. So for uh, for all those who are completely beginners and um, might have questions like what is remote sensing? So remote sensing is nothing but a technique or say uh, or say a te technology that enables us to acquire or gather information about uh, the earth surface or any object or any phenomena without making physical contact with that particular object or say without a particular uh, surface. For example, we all have been using uh, remote controls for controlling our TVs and air conditioners and all. So it is also one of the uh, examples of remote sensing, we can say. Our eyes are also uh, the uh, remote sensing sensors because we can sense anything from the distance uh, using our eyes. So there are um, basically two types of remote sensing. The first is passive remote sensing and the another is active remote sensing part. So the one uh, that the one uh, part of remote sensing that particularly works on the reflected sunlight uh, or it or it does not have the uh, its own source of illumination or electromagnetic radiation is generally known as passive remote sensing while on the other hand those uh, the remote sensing techniques which has uh, their own source of illumination or say, electromagnetic radiation is known as active remote sensing and radar and lidar are uh, examples of it and okay so there are multiple uh, sensors when it comes to the remote sensing. Uh, we, we have optical sensors, uh, microwave sensors. Opti in optical sensors, we have visible range uh, in which uh, you, uh, human eyes can see. So visible range, visible uh, sensors are there. Near infrared sensors are also part of uh, optical sensors and thermal infrared that enables us to uh, analyze the uh, surface temperature or say uh, ocean surface temperature and, and th thermal applications of any surface uh, we have micro sensors uh, passive se so scatterometer is an example of passive micro sensor while on the other hand synthetic aperture radar that, that is uh, more widely used uh, nowadays it it is also active sensor so the, we have several uh, remote sensing sensors available we will get to know uh, in, in much details like uh, for which application we can use uh, which sensor and which can be the more accurate to use in the uh, upcoming detail course we have already included all those parts in it so um, yeah, uh, we know that uh, entire principle of remote sensing is based on the uh, electromagnetic energy because uh, electromagnetic energy uh, is the fundamental uh, source that requires that is required to transit information right um like uh, the uh, and we, we know that electromagnetic uh, spectrum is an overview of continuum of electromagnetic energy from extremely short wavelengths to, uh, for example, from gamma rays to extremely long wavelengths, uh, uh, including uh, radio waves. So here you can see uh, like the chart of electromagnetic radiation or say electromagnetic spectrum. Um, and it, it has been divided into several um, parts. Uh, for example, 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer is our visible spectrum in which you and I can or say humans can see. So it is included in our optical sensors and further, for example, infrared and other other parts are included in our different section. So these divisions are not absolute and definite. There might be overlapping in this visible spectrum or say electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, this is it uh, now now let's see how uh, this remote sensing works what is the ex uh, actual process of remote sensing how does it work so like let me show it uh, to you by the image it will be more easy to understand for the absolute beginners let's say for example we know that sun is the only major source 
for electromagnetic radiation for our planet so let's say electromagnetic radiation uh, comes uh, from the sun uh, through the our through the atmosphere so uh, some of the electromagnetic radiation might get scattered in the atmosphere uh, for example solar wavelengths but uh, as soon as it uh, touches the earth surface and gets reflected back so satellite uh, sensors will grab it and it will uh, process that is captured radiation or say electromagnetic radiation and in triangulation method and then send those data to ground station and then um, those uh, after processing th those data or signals in our ground stations we will have a raster image or say satellite image generated so uh, that can be used for various purposes for example uh, okay. so uh, for, uh, Earth monitoring, environment monitoring, ocean monitoring, land use planning, and etc. We'll see like what are the applications applied. So this is one of the examples uh, of uh, a Landsat uh, series satellite. You can see over here uh, each satellite uh, will have you know, different number of bands. For example, Landsat five is having land, uh, seven bands, and each band works in different wavelengths. Uh, for and um, uh, you can here you can see each wavelength. Uh, represents the uh, nominal spectral location and each band is useful for various purposes for example uh, useful for soil and vegetation discrimination you can we can use blue band so you will get to also learn in detail like which band will be useful for your application or for your project uh, um, in the upcoming course if you if you enroll for it and it will be very uh, particularly project based applications so you will get much more, much deeper and more detailed clarified idea about it so th there are actually uh, two in remote sensing two common uh, types of sensors uh, which are uh, push broom and whisk broom uh, sensors generally here you can see it, it is also known as along track scanner and along across track scanner so push broom uh, sensor captures let me show you uh, to you by image so push broom uh, sensors uh, push broom sensor uh, capture images in a continuous strip as they move along similar to the motion of the push broom sweeping uh, across the floor here you can see this is the direction of its movement uh, this this method provides this partial resolution and is commonly used in uh, satellite imaging or like or on the other hand the whisk broom sensors are uh, acquired data uh, by scanning across uh, the field of view here you can see like it is scanning uh, like this uh, scanning across the path Okay, so similar to the motion of this broom uh, sweeping back and forth here, you can see it is like, it will be scanning like this back and forth. While this technique may take uh, longer to capture an image, it offers advantages in spectral and radiometric resolutions. Like now let us get to know like what is resolution. So in remote sensing, uh, we have four types of resolution, uh, four, four key types of resolution, uh, which are spatial, spectral, temporal, and radiometric resolution. So um, uh, what, what th these are all very important uh, whenever it comes to uh, use the remote sensing imageries. So spatial resolution determines the smallest object uh, that can be detected affecting the detail of image. It, it, it re relates to the uh, detail of images, uh, while on the other hand, spectral resolution indicates the ability to distinguish fine wavelength and intervals essential for the identifying various materials. Uh, temporal resolution refers to how often the satellite is re revisiting the same place that is related to the temporal resolution and radiometric resolution um, measures the sensor's ability to detect uh, suitable differences in energy levels. So this is a uh, very brief information about these four different spatial resolutions. You will get much detailed idea and what kind of resolution is suitable for your application, particular application in the uh, in the mentioned course uh, as abhinav sir mentioned so this is uh, one of the uh, this is a brief information about the landsat uh, program which uh, which was launched by the united states of america and as of now there are a, a total of land, nine uh, landsat satellite has been launched uh, the latest one is landsat 9 and all of these uh, landsat series satellite provides a 30 meter of resolution uh, that means we, we will have one pixel for 30 by 30 meters. Uh, so uh, initially it was launched in 1972 and recent is uh, Landsat 9, which was I think uh, launched in 2019 or some uh, eight, around around the period. So uh, we have the different applications for remote sensing, uh, as I mentioned above, like uh, it can be environment monitoring for forestry, for example, 
with the help of remote sensing imagery is we can identify the uh, deforestation or uh, or forest health uh, for the geology uh, uh, applications we can uh, we can uh, analysis the uh, do the analysis of uh, minerals available on the particular region of interest uh, 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 and several for hydrology we can do hydrological modeling with the help of remote sensing imagery and we can make a map of stream orders we can also use um, uh, we can also make land use planning and uh, allocate land for different different infrastructure purpose infrastructural development purposes in defense sector remote sensing uh, can be very ha helpful to identify the movement of our enemy states and uh, border issues uh, risk management or say disaster management okay uh, transportation uh, planning urban planning and rural planning it, it, it this all can be uh, possible with the help of remote sensing now our second part is gis so what is gis so gis is actually uh, uh, the amalgamation of two distinct principles the first is the geography and this uh, another is information technology um, so geography um, uh, let me uh, give you the brief uh, definition about the gis like gis is nothing but a technology or or say system that enables us or say user to uh, store, manipulate, and represent the geospatial data. So such technology is known as GIS or say geographic information system. So most, most that is the most common definition of GIS, uh, wide, uh, known all, all across the globe. GIS, basically GIS is made up of all these five components. The first is uh, data or say geospatial data. The second is the procedure. Uh, the third one is hardware. Uh, obviously, our laptops, uh, computers, or say uh, when if we are working with GPS, so GPS receivers, satellites, th those everything will be covered in hardware. And softwares uh, are necessary because we will have to have some particular softwares uh, in order to work with remote sensing imageries and in order to uh, run several algorithms. So we are about to learn uh, one of those softwares uh, today, which is known as QGIS. So basically, QGIS is uh, QGIS is a open source software uh, that is uh, free to use, and uh, it it is the main part of, of uh, the QGIS because as it is the open source of uh, software, it is available freely and supports large, and it is supported by the large community of developers and users. So it is constantly updated as well. So QGIS is the is one of the base uh, softwares. Uh, when it comes to uh, do uh, work with the gis applications so now uh, we will go ahead with the uh, our uh, uh, modules uh, second module so in the second module you will get to learn or say you, uh, over here you will have idea about geo referencing and basic uh, or say advanced basic and digit advanced digitization in geo referencing you will get to learn how it is uh, done so let me tell you because uh, this is a demo webinar and we only, we have a time a time limit of one hour i have already loaded uh, one image here you can see uh, let me turn off turn it off and turn turn it on again so here you can see this is a an a image which was downloaded from the survey of india's portal uh, when it was initially downloaded it was only in jpg format and it 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 did not have any coordinates uh, coordinate information so now in in order in order to uh, do the georeference this image how we can do it also let let us first understand what is georeferencing so georeferencing uh, is nothing but uh, it is a process of aligning spatial data to a known coordinate system so that it can be accurately mapped and analyzed uh, georeferencing ensures that all spatial data layers uh, aligns correctly and uh, allows for precise uh, analysis so uh, here you can see uh, the this is uh, this image is particularly showing the bay of kutch and it is exactly falling upon my base map layer of the google uh, google imageries so this is already a uh, geo referenced image uh, if it was not geo referenced it would not be it would not be falling exactly on that particular location so this is what geo referencing enables us to uh, do with uh, images it assigns the particular coordinates to that images so you will get to learn how you can do it um, in the upcoming course and uh, using uh, the assigning the coordinates to these particular images and if you, you if you have old or physical maps 
with you but you do not have coordinates on it you can do geo referencing you will go, you will also get to learn it in the in that detail one month full one month course so what are the particular benefits of geo referencing like why do we need to do geo referencing so uh, geo referencing first of all geo referencing ensures that spatial data from different sources can be seamlessly integrated and it improves the accuracy and reliability of the spatial data uh, which is uh, very crucial uh, for informed decision making uh, in various fields okay it allows uh, uh, historical comparison and provides insight for changes over the period of time and it can be used in several applications like uh, the urban planning for uh, city planners to digitize old maps uh, in order to digitize old maps they, they will have to first be, um, uh, do the geo referencing and place those maps onto that particular location in order to detect the changes happened over the period of time and for environmental um, management geo reference uh, imageries are used to can be used for the chain detection so these are several applications for uh, of geo referencing now uh, our second uh, topic for this module is uh, digitization so what is digitization uh, and uh, uh, how it can be done so digitization uh, is nothing but uh, it is a converting analog maps uh, or images into digital maps uh, or also digital format that can be used in gis where here you can see uh, this image is uh, this image was downloaded from the survey of india and this uh, but basically it was a physical map that was converted into image and that then it was loaded into gis now in order to make a digital map out of it uh, we can use the help of we can take the help of digitization technique so th this process is essential for preserving um, this uh, this particular process of digitization can be helpful for preserving historical maps and integrating them with the modern spatial data or say modern gis data in, with the help of gis like how you can do it so i have already uh, made a vector layer uh, in order to do the digitization uh, and uh, there are several um, digitization operations available over here in the digitization panel for example if you have uh, made up a, a polygon uh, with the help of digitization and if if that particular polygon has been uh, placed somewhere uh, or say misplaced and now you if you want to move it so you can move your digitized uh, components with the help of this move feature in gis or in digitized panel here you can see move feature you can also rotate these features okay uh, and suppose if you uh, if you have mis uh, created uh, or some uh, there, there has been some mismanagement while digitizing the particular boundaries so you can uh, also do the uh, re reshaping the, of the feature as well as like let me show you for example uh, this is the shape and i want this outer boundary as well so i can reshape it simply and you can see the shape of that particular shape file has been changed so there are multiple options available uh, for the digitization uh, which you will get to learn uh, in details because uh, this is for particularly for the demo so i i have shown you this uh, how you can do it and now our now uh, up, our upcoming task is uh, proximity analysis the uh, module 3 so uh, let me tell you first like what is proximity analysis so proximity analysis um, generally examines its partial relationships between So proximity analysis generally examines the spatial relationships between the different geographic features and it determines how close or far these features are from each other, which is useful for various applications. Uh, okay, uh, we will be uh, for this proximity analysis for this demo, we will be learning about the buffering, like what is the buffering? So buffer uh, is creating zones around a particular feature uh, at a specified distance. So here you can see, uh, this was our particular feature uh, the, uh, for, uh, the, that we uh, create we had created for the digitization purpose and now we have created one boundary uh, at a distance of 10 kilometers for example uh, 
so uh, if you will be measuring the distance from the boundary of this particular polygon to this uh, our newly created boundary it will be 10 10 kilometers so this is a buffer for 10 kilometers so uh, what is the purpose of doing so like what is the purpose of proximity analysis uh, generally there are uh, uh, key concepts uh, uh, like uh, the buffering near uh, near analysis and thesen polygons but for now we are only focusing on the buffering part so buffering involves creating a polygon around a point uh, line or polygon here we have created it around the polygon at a specific distance uh, we have taken it for example here as a 10 kilometers so this particular can be useful in uh, applications like uh, urban uh, buffering uh, can determine areas around the parks that need additional amenities uh, for example uh, or second example we can take for example we, we have a map of or say point of a school and we want to ensure the safety and security features or say facilities are available around the school or say we want to develop some other new uh, facilities uh, for example we want to add uh, new police stations or police booths around those particular school areas so that we can make safety of our students or children in the uh, time of uh, disasters or uh, emergency responses so we can create such polygons or say buffer around the school and uh, ensure uh, whether but uh, whether it is uh, nearer to or not and uh, similarly for environmental uh, purposes we can make uh, buffers in order to uh, decide the uh, restricted area in order to make wildlife species safer and um, uh, uh, free from unnecessary human interactions and all so uh, this is all the applications where buffer can be or say proximity analysis can be useful uh, especially uh, it can it can also be useful for public health agencies and all so this is it now uh, we will we will see about the attribute data handling our uh, our next topic in this module is attribute data handling so let me uh, first tell you like what is the attribute data let me show you uh, attribute data is nothing but, but uh, additional information about uh, the spatial features uh, for example uh, over here we had created a polygon that, that was actually covering uh, one of the lakes on that particular shape file so whenever you are creating uh, those uh, shape files you will you will be able to create uh, such attribute tables as you as you can see over here right now because it is already uh, created for for this demo purpose so in this attribute table you can see several columns uh, showing the district names and literacy rates youth population sex ratio and total population so these are uh, different different attributes related to this particular shape file of gujarat uh, gujarat district shape files so okay. so attributes uh, attribute data provides additional information about spatial features uh, in GIS attribute data is stored in tables, tables linked to spatial features. As you can see so over here, uh, this, this particular table is can be known as the attribute table. Why it, it is so much important uh, to um, handle attribute data, attribute data or say attribute table. So handling attribute data uh, effectively allows us to have detailed analysis and querying of spatial data. For example, uh, I only want the, for example, I have 500 uh, rows and columns over here, and I want particular data of uh, the sex, the states or say the districts which has sex ratio above 950. So I can, what I can do is I can simply run a spatial query on this attribute table, and it will give me uh, those particular uh, states or districts which only has the sex ratio above 950. So this is uh, what we can do with the help of attribute tables and by handling attribute data very accurately. You can, you will get to learn how you can do uh, or say how you can run such partial queries uh, in the in the in the mentioned detail one month full course. Uh, it okay. Uh, it enhances uh, the ability to extract meaningful insights from geospatial data and additionally. Uh, if you have, uh, so suppose if you want to add any additional information to this particular attribute table, which you have already stored in a different spread, spread of Excel or any other tabular data. 
so you can also join the data over here using the feature called join data uh, join attribute table so this is uh, this is why uh, handling attribute ta table gets very uh, important because if uh, if we make fumbles in uh, handling attribute tables and delete uh, any of the attributes from over here it will also be directly deleted from our maps over here so it gets crucial to handle our attribute data table very accurately um it can be uh, health agencies uh, now now we uh, we all have seen several gis maps during the covid times for so far public health health agencies use gis to map disease outbreak and analyze the distribution of health services so if uh, they they are not able to handle their uh, attribute table perfectly at attribute data perfectly they will be publishing the wrong uh, they will be pub publishing maps having wrong information just because they couldn't handle their attribute data uh, very accurately so this is why it is so much important now uh, let us move ahead for the uh, next module uh, which is our uh, field sampling techniques like uh, let me show you So uh, let us first understand about the uh, field, uh, what is field sampling and why it is uh, important. So field sampling involves uh, collecting ground truth uh, data to validate our remotely sensed observations and enhance accuracy of our geospatial analysis. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we are making uh, a map. Uh, or say we are make uh, we are plotting uh, points over over this map and we particularly want to uh, uh, make a map of uh, hospitals present in this particular city of jamnagar and we are currently ma making uh, or pinpointing those particular locations of hospital and making a map out of it but now if we want to make uh, make it more accurate and if we want to uh, cross check whether our uh, point point data is accurate or not we can what we can do is we can go to uh, ground truthing uh, and but to that particular location and uh, match our uh, geo remotely sensed data and vice versa we can directly go to ground first and we can color, capture the coordinates of different different hospitals or say any amenities in the city and we can uh, as we have captured uh, the location of the, those particular points we will be having its coordinates in terms of latitude and longitude so what we can do over here is we can directly load those data into our QGIS or say GIS softwares, and um, th then we can point or say plot those data uh, exactly on our maps. So this is uh, where field sampling techniques can be uh, helpful. Uh, field sampling data uh, is integrated into GIS, uh, just just like uh, just like the example I gave it I gave it to you gave to you recently. To improve accuracy uh, uh, and uh, reliability of spatial analysis, integration. Uh, this integration allows for more uh, precise mapping and modeling of of environmental and spatial phenomena. For uh, like, for example, environmental monitoring, scientists can collect soil and water samples to monitor pollution levels and assess environmental health. And similarly, for agriculture and urban planning, uh, we can collect the uh, ground truth data uh, and uh, match it with the uh, remotely sensed data so this is what a uh, field sampling technique is and you will you will be you will be learning how uh, you can do it how you can capture ground truth data and how you can load it into gis uh, and all the techniques related to field sampling techniques okay our next module is the satellite data platforms so uh, like what is uh, satellite data platforms so satellite data platforms uh, provide a wealth of information captured by satellite imageries uh, which are orbiting in our uh, uh, over the earth these platforms uh, uh, the, the prop, these platforms uh, gives us the uh, satellite imageries of, of uh, optical optically sensed imageries or microwavely micro remote sensing data and it also provides us the uh, remotely sensed data for creating digital elevation model so uh, there are several uh, satellite data platforms available uh, which also gives the free access to satellite 
uh, imagery or the remotely sensed data over here we will be uh, seeing one of those particular satellite uh, uh, pla data platforms which is uh, usgs united states Geolo Ge geological surveys or the explorer so how you can uh, uh, download data from over here the very first thing is you will have to create uh, your account and then log into this uh, uh, portal using your credentials and from here you can uh, search your uh, area of interest and then um, once your location is over available over here you can go to data sets and then uh, you can download uh, data of any of your choice of, or suitable to your projects for example uh, if, um, as i mentioned in the theory section for remote sensing uh, for the landsat satellite so here you can see landsat 8 9 7 and 5 are available so you can just select uh, uh, the uh, satellite data of your choice and go to results and once you click on the results uh, you can select ima uh, imageries uh, which which will be uh, suitable for you uh, you can uh, by this you can check whether your imagery is placing uh, on your region of interest or covering what or not and then you can press this download button as of now as i have not logged in uh, to this portal uh, the download button is uh, is not enabled but as as soon as you will log in with your credentials it will be uh, available for download and once you click upon the download button your image or image will start uh, to download and uh, uh, it it might take it might take some time because remote sensing imageries are uh, comparatively larger uh, in size so this is how you can download uh, satellite data from various platforms uh, this is what one of the examples of satellite data platforms there are various uh, data platforms for example you know, another example is the copernicus platform which is uh, operated by the uh, european space agency so this is it for the uh, satellite data platforms now before okay uh, the next part is our uh, image processing so let me let me let me show you what is image processing and how we can do it So here you can see one of one satellite image is already loaded over here. So uh, what is what is image processing? The very first question uh, would arise: It uh, image processing uh, is a uh, image processing a technique that involves uh, the manipulation uh, and analysis of digital images uh, to improve their quality or extract useful information out of it. Okay, uh, in uh, in GIS. Image processing techniques are applied to remotely sensed data to enhance the visual interpretation and accuracy uh, of spatial analysis. Uh, nowadays, uh, there are also uh, remotely sensed data available, uh, which is already uh, atmospherically corrected and all. But if it is not, uh, we can do so uh, with the help of uh, image processing uh, techniques <coughs> in order to um, uh, easily identify the features available on the uh, in the imageries. Uh, here you can see uh, this is a uh, true color composite image um, uh, in order to identify the features uh, very uh, easily we can turn it into for false color composition and there are multiple uh, combinations uh, related to the false color composition in in order to identify different different features available uh, easily on this image so uh, what are those combinations and what uh, which combinations can be particularly useful for uh, applications like agriculture forestry management or say disaster uh, disaster management or say urban um, urban analysis uh, you will you will be having in detail much detailed information uh, about uh, these particular uh, combinations for false color compos composition and how you can do image processing in the upcoming uh, course we, we, which are which is about to start from the first of june uh, as mentioned by abhinav sir in the beginning so this is uh, what image uh, image processing means uh, key techniques uh, there are some key techniques in image processing which is uh, enhancement so enhancement techniques improves the visual 
uh, appearance of uh, an image uh, uh, we can do classification uh, for example uh, classification uh, we can do classification and assign pixels in an image to categorize uh, it into different different classes for uh, uh, such as land cover classes for example uh, forest co classes or water bodies or uh, urban areas this is how we can do classification uh, we can do chain detection uh, uh, with the help of uh, two different imageries of the two different time periods for example we can take a, a one imagery of 1990 and another of 2020 and we can easily identify the change uh, change happened over the period of time uh, using those two different set uh, imageries with the help of this image processing uh, what is uh, so importance image processing uh, this is the um, importance of image processing uh, it improves the quality and interpretability of remotely sensed data and making it easier for user to extract valuable information and identify features easily uh, it can be useful in environment modeling uh, so sorry environment monitoring agri agriculture there are several several indices that can be helpful in image processing to identify features and for particular applications uh, it, it can be helpful in disaster management uh, during and after the natural disasters image uh, it can be useful for assessing damage and plan recovery uh, routes and uh, efforts so this is uh, what uh, image uh, processing uh, includes as you can see it, it will be including uh, techniques for image processing using qgis tools uh, you can do mosaicing uh, and multiple images mosaicing for example suppose if you have more than two imageries and now if, if you want to merge all, all of those images how you can do it you will also get to learn suppose if you don't want and the entire image and if you want a smaller section of that image uh, you can do clipping so how you can do clipping for the specific uh, area of interest and layer stacking uh, what is layer stacking so all these components will be uh, covered uh, in this detailed course and hands-on uh, practice will also be uh, 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 aided to you so now before we move on to our uh, last module for this today's demo uh, web webinar let me just uh, give you some brief uh, briefing about uh, let me give you some briefing about the, this course for those uh, if if anyone has joined lately uh, and uh, before abhinav sir concluded uh, sorry after abhinav sir concluded so uh, this is uh, what you guys have seen over here uh, in these all modules that i have uh, included uh, over a past uh, 40 or 45 minutes will be covered uh, in these one month full uh, qgis fundamental course uh, and these are the all these are these are all are the modules which will be uh, taught in the in this course in very much details and uh, as of now uh, it is only uh, available for the, uh, the it is only for the students and research scholars and it is on, having only uh, limited seats uh, only 20 seats are there and uh, 10 are already filled and it will be starting from the first june it will cover fundamentals of remote sensing in gis in in it you will have uh, thoroughly uh, um, you will be ex explained uh, what is remote sensing in gis thoroughly what are its application in various fields and what are the data you can use uh, which are the band combinations you can use for particular application all things will be taught you will uh, you will be uh, you you will get to learn how you can do georeferencing and what kind of queries uh, might occur or what kind of errors might occur when you are doing georeferencing uh, which algorithm you should use for particular areas when you are uh, do, doing the georeferencing so these all queries will be solved and uh, hands on you uh, you will be helped with the hands on experience uh, basic advanced basic and advanced digitization um, as of now in this particular uh, uh, demo webinar we have on already only covered two or three uh, tools for basic and uh, advanced digitization but there are multiple more tools available which can be uh, which can make our digitization more uh, effortless and uh, make our maps more uh, interpretable with the help of uh, digitization uh, techniques so proximity and in proximity analysis we have uh, only uh, we have only uh, 
learned about the buffer but there are multiple other things uh, for, for example multi -ring, multi ring buffers these and polygon these all will be included uh, in this proximity analysis uh, module uh, you will also get to learn how you can ha handle uh, the huge attribute data uh, and do database management in, uh, how you can import or export attribute data and uh, uh, live demonstration will be given to you and how you can run spatial queries uh, over those uh, la large uh, attribute data and get the results of uh, your interest <coughs> will be taught to you. Techniques for field sampling, like how you can uh, import or export uh, your uh, field sample data uh, and which, uh, what will be the format of uh, your field sampling uh, data collection, how you can load it into QGIS, everything will be covered. Thematic mapping, uh, Okay, so thematic mapping. Sorry. Uh, let let. Uh, let me show. Uh, like what is a thematic mapping? So we can get. Uh, we can. Uh, from this uh, particular term, uh, we can uh, we can imagine what is uh, thematic mapping is. Thema uh, thematic mapping is nothing but. The map which which are uh, generally representing a particular theme. Okay. Over here you can see uh, a, a map that is showing a theme. For uh, let me show you a theme of the sex ratio, for example, uh, and it is uh, different uh, range of sex uh, sex ratio has been uh, sh shown over here uh, on this map. Uh, with, with the help of different color codes. Uh, for example, here you can see uh, the uh, the uh, lighter color, lighter yellow color is showing us a range of sex ratio between 787 to 925. So this is how you can uh, make uh, thematic maps for different different themes. Uh, for example, this is one of the maps that is showing uh, the literacy rates for particular districts of Gujarat. It is uh, obviously it is uh, showing literacy rate in percentages and hence uh, different uh, colors has been assigned to the literacy rate of the particular districts. So this is uh, one, another example of uh, the thematic map. And you can also make 2.5D and 3D maps uh, as well uh, with the help of thematic mapping. So the, here you can see I have uh, take, created a math. 2.5D map of uh, coastal districts of Gujarat. So this is what this is all the things uh, you can achieve with the help of thematic mapping. So you will also get to learn how you can do it. Uh, the creating thematic maps using different classification methods and introduction to map diagram and pie chart. How you can add uh, bar diagram and pie chart into your maps. Uh, you, you will also get to learn it generating 2.5D map uh, as I showed it to you right now and how you, we can do it uh, will, will be taught to you. And our last uh, module for today's uh, webinar is uh, topographical analysis. So what is topographical analysis? Well, so topographical analysis is, let me, Come to the QGIS first. Okay, so what is topographical analysis? So topographical analysis uh, involves the examining the shape and features of our surface. Uh, it is crucial aspect of geospatial analysis as it provides insights uh, of, about the terrain characteristics and landforms of, for their particular region of interest or say our surface. Understanding topography of an area is essential for various applications. Uh, for example, land use planning, infrastructure development and environmental management and several other applications. So how we can do it? Um, so in order to uh, do this topographic analysis, we can use the uh, digital elevation model uh, and we can easily acquire the data uh, required to create a digital elevation model from satellite data platforms. Uh, the satellite data platform which we recently uh, 
learned about uh, the USGS. It provides the data of SITM for the creation of digital elevation model. So what is digital elevation model? So digital elevation models are uh, nothing but actually a representation of a terrain or say a surface uh, in the digital form. Digital, it is a di digital representation of uh, terrain elevation data typically displayed uh, uh, as a grid of uh, elevation values. Uh, these models uh, are generated by various uh, sources such as it can be generated with the help of uh, satellite imagery. It can also be generated with the help of LIDAR. Uh, LIDAR is uh, the cutting edge technolo technology for now it for now for it nowadays and aerial aerial surveys and aerial imagery is uh, or say drone imagery can also be used for the same application. So DM provide DA digital elevation model provides us accurate and detailed representation of our surface and elevation. So let us uh, get to know like uh, how we can make elevation map uh, using uh, this digital elevation model. So here you can see uh, one image is uh, shown over here on on the screen uh, that is showing the elevation uh, for the uh, region of Girnar uh, Girnar Mountain in the state of uh, Gujarat. So. Here you can see the red color uh, is showing the flat terrain because it is showing the elevation of zero meters and the highest elevation is shown by uh, the uh, sky blue or say blue blue color which is the peak of the Girnar mountain over here and the highest elevation is uh, 100 and 1014 meters. So this is elevation map uh, um, created with the help of digital elevation model uh, data which was acquired from the USGS portal. So how you how you can make this elevation map? You will also get to learn it. Now uh, another aspect is uh, the contours. So uh, what are uh, what is the con uh, what is contours? Like for example, so contours are nothing but a line that is uh, adjoining the uh, common points of the uh, elevation. For, for example, here you can see uh, the, uh, the pink line or uh, that is the contours generated for this particular terrain. And you can see over here uh, that that each line is adjoining the same level of elevation. Uh, for example, you here you can see I have labeled the contour and it is showing us the elevation of 60 meters. So this particular line will be adjoining the elevation of 60 meters on the entire image or say on the entire terrain. So this is uh, what contours are and uh, contours, contour lines on topographic. By analyzing the contour lines, uh, land managers can uh, identify areas of high elevation uh, gradients, gradients or steep slopes prone to erosion. Contour maps can help in designing effective erosion control measures. Uh, such as uh, terracing or contour plowing to reduce soil erosion and it can also be helpful for water shed management plants uh, okay so this is the applications of contours and how you can uh, it will also be taught to you uh, in that uh, full one month course how you can generate the contours and uh, how you can label these kind of contours because uh, it will not be added automatically once you are generating the contours you will have to add labels how you can change the uh, color and patterns of the contours all things will be covered in that uh, particular uh, course now let us move ahead to the slope so uh, okay so this particular image is showing us the uh, slope of of that uh, the same region so what is slope so slope is uh, nothing but the steepness of that uh, uh, slope denotes the steepness of that particular land surface like uh, or the steepness of terrain and slope or the steepness of terrain uh, can be useful uh, the study of slope becomes very uh, useful uh, when we want to determine the direction of or speed of water runoff 
for, for example uh, border road organization uh, which is generally uh, uh, assigned to uh, create the uh, roads and infrastructure in the uh, hilly region of, of northeast india and ladakh region wants to create a uh, new road uh, and uh, if if they, if they, did, uh, they do not have uh, particular ideas of the slope area slopey areas it can lead to the uh, disastrous uh, for uh, infrastructure slope measures the steepness of the terrain and is typically expressed as in percentage or in degrees uh, particularly it influences the factors uh, as water runoff soil erosion and land stability so that's why uh, slope uh, uh, an analysis is useful for engineers and planners to analyze uh, to analyze the uh, stability of the slope uh, for infrastructure development projects high slope gradients uh, indicate the area prone to landslide uh, or slope failures uh, which may uh, pose a risk to roads and buildings and pipelines and it, it can also be a uh, danger for human lives uh, so slope analysis can also help in determining appropriate construction techniques and uh, slope stabilization measures to ensure safety and longevity for the infrastructure so this is why uh, slope analysis is uh, useful and here you can see um, slope is uh, shown in the degrees uh, the highest degree of slope uh, in this particular image is 58.76 degree so uh, which is obviously the peak of the ginnar mountain and rest of the uh, region is uh, showing the uh, slopes uh, related to that particular color code so this is slope and the last aspect uh, last thing is the aspect map so uh, let let me first make it clear like what is aspect so aspect refers to the direction in which slope faces it affects the factors such as solar radiation temperature distribution and vegetation growth aspect is often described using uh, uh, cardinal directions uh, for example north facing slope or northeast facing slope so, and so on so what are the uh, particular applications uh, or say why do we need to uh, do this uh, study of aspect so aspect uh, can be useful uh, for renewable energy site selection for solar farms uh, aspect describes the direction in which slope faces relative relative to the direction solar energy solar energy generation uh, depends on the orientation of solar panels uh, relative to the sun's path so aspect as and additionally aspect analysis can be helpful in identifying south facing slopes that receive maximum sunlight exposure throughout the day so this is these are the some of the applications of uh, aspect map set uh, why aspect aspect map can be useful and uh, in aspect map uh, you can assign the uh, different color codes to the particular direction and um, uh, by identifying this color code one can get to know like uh, which direction this particular slope is facing so this is how aspect map can be useful for several applications so i think this is all for uh, from my side for this demo webinar now uh, for those who want to uh, who wants to register for this full one full one month certificate course can go to our link of tgis.co.in upcoming uh, courses and go to uh, this particular course of one month online qgis fundamentals and from here you will be able to download the full course details pdf uh, so that you can have idea like what things will be covered and what are the outcome what will be the outcomes of uh, this particular course for the joinees uh, and uh, uh, from here you can also download the sample pdf for one uh, course uh, we, uh, which we have uh, created for the corona map, corona during the co corona pandemic uh, to me measure the uh, to make the corona cases ma map of the corona cases so you can download it and perform it by yourself because it is uh, showing the step by step step by step pdf to uh, do that particular uh, task in your qgis softwares so this is it for now if you now let us move if you have any questions for this particular session
if you have any questions you can simply drop it drop down your questions or in q and a section so thank you bhagav for the wonderful session so guys now we are uh, 